the CCP declared a people's war against America. And the interesting thing is they declared that in May of 2019. What happens officially eight months later? COVID. Thank you. It is, uh, it is great to be back in the Netherlands. Uh, Diane and I uh, very much loved our time in the Netherlands. It, uh, it was a wonderful experience, uh, and the best part of it was when we... Nee, dit moet 20 geweest zijn, niet 14. 20. The... Uh, um, we thoroughly enjoyed it, and we loved the Dutch people. Dutch media needs so fail. <laughs> okay? But for now, praten wij over vrijheid. Vrijheid. Because this is the battle that we in the West face today. It is the battle that we face in, on a number of different fronts and we must confront it together. Those of us that live in free countries, countries where we believe that the government is supposed to represent us, we face threats each and every day from our, uh, to our freedom. Whether it's the Netherlands, whether it's the United States, whether it's the UK, there are always people that want to take our freedom. Today I met with some of your farmers, the Boeren. I don't, I don't know how the Dutch will resolve the issue of the, of the farmers, but how many of you believe that the Dutch farmers believe their freedom is under threat? Yeah. All right. I will go back to America and I will proudly fly. <laughs> Days of flock. I will, I will send it, I will send the picture to Terry and uh, he can decide whether they post it or not, but it will fly uh, above our flag. Because as we met with the farmers today, what did they, what did they say? You know, there, were, there was a farmer that said, you know, we've been in the, uh, I don't know, close enough. We have been, our family has been in the farming business for seven generations. And I may be the farmer I may be the generation that will have to close that farm. Not because I am a poor farmer, but because someone will put in a set of restrictions that will make it no longer possible for me to be a farmer. We face the same kinds of threats in America, and like I said, I, don't, I have no idea how you will resolve that issue here in the Netherlands, but it is, it is a good example of people at an individual level, on a personal level, believing that their freedom is under threat. Remember 2020? What was the Dutch slogan for commemorating the 75th anniversary of defeating Nazism? Remember what the word was? We all got little pins. Freiheit. Freedom. We were all celebrating the freedom that the Dutch experienced 75 years ago. Freiheit. At the same time that governments all around the world were doing what? Taking your freedom. Right? I joked with my friends at the Dutch Parliament, and I said, in Michigan, 
we have found where COVID comes from. And they said, oh, tell us. I said, it comes from the paint aisle in the store. You know what paint is, right? Fev, all right? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, I talked to my family in the States and we have these big stores. They sell, you know, they sell tools, they sell garden equipment, and they sell all of these other things, but they have yellow tape around the paint section. So that must be where COVID is. Don't go to the paint section because that is where COVID hides and there where, that's where you get COVID. And you know, they couldn't go into the garden section uh, and there were all kinds of things and you know, it was all about economic fairness because they closed the paint store. So if you go to a big store that has paint in one aisle, well, you can't buy paint there either. But so freedom is under attack. John, at, at, at a very personal level, it is also under attack on a larger scale. As you talk with the farmers and as we talk about different issues uh, that, happen in, that are happening in the U.S., you know, your, your issues and your fights are not unique, all right? Americans feel the same thing. But what the farmers tell us today is they say, here they say, and, and in, Washington, in, in Michigan we say the same thing, Washington isn't listening to us anymore. They don't listen to the average person. Where do they get their direction from? And people here, I hear them say the same thing here. You know, where, who's telling the Hague to put in place all of these other decisions, all of these things that deal with the farmers? Is it coming from the grassroots up? You know, in Michigan we always ask, is it coming from Lansing? Is it coming from Washington? Where is it coming from? And there's more and more of a fear that it's coming from places like Davos, where the elite, the globalists, have decided what is best for us and how we should live. Again, a little bit more of an erosion of what? Freiheit. Governments that are more responsive to the elites who think they know how we should live rather than to us telling them how we want to live and them in creating and enforcing those types of laws. So we worry about those two erosions of freedom. And then I think the third threat that we face, and you can start the slides, the third threat that we face is, I don't define this as NATO declaring war on China or that America is at war at China, with China. It is the wrong question. It is the wrong statement. China is at war with the West. They are an evil regime that wants to dominate the world and for 20 years, for especially the last 20 years, China has been at war with the US. Many of you may remember the, uh, thank you. The rest of you should like that as well, all right? But it was 20 years ago that I was in Congress at the time. And you may remember, I don't know exactly what the debate here was, but we had a debate about whether America would support most favored nation status for China meaning we would trade with them exactly the same way under the same rules and agreements that we had with the Dutch. Our businesses said, oh, that's so good. Our government said, you know, our administration said, it is so good. If we do business with China like that, they will become like us. They will be more open. They will embrace freedom. They will embrace human rights. What's happened? what's happened in the last 20 years. This is what the Chinese Communist Party was and continues to be. This is, a this is a party that has brutally 
controlled its own people. 1958 to 1961, a huge famine in China. The Dutch know about famine, hunger winter, right? But that was by a war. The, the starvation in China was done by the Chinese Communist Party that resulted in what? We don't really know. We guess somewhere between 15 and 50 million Chinese people died because of, a deci because of the decisions not that outsiders made, but that their own government made for their own people. This is a country today, organ harvesting. It's kind of interesting. In America, if you need a liver transplant or something like that, you have to wait for certain conditions to happen, and they happen by accident. That, you know, they find certain things happen, and today they have a donor for you. In China, you can schedule it. Well, how does that work? Someone dies. It is a business for them. Mass imprisonment of political prisoners. Religious discrimination. This is what a communist regime looks like. And imagine, do you really believe that a Chinese Communist Party will treat the rest of the world any better than how they treat their own people? I don't think so. Well, I, I, I can't, I can't, I didn't hear it and I'm not going to respond to regular com comments. But you know, it's how they treat themselves. What is the second thing that we know about the Chinese Communist Party? They have aspirations to be the dominant and most influential and controlling government in the world. This is where they want to go. This was our, just in the last month, our director of the FBI, who i did not very fond of, uh, you know, he authorized the raid to go to Mar-a-Lago, so I'm not a big fan, um, but um, he got this one right, and he did it with the director of MI5 from the UK, where he said, you know, the vision that we had 20 years ago when we said, we will open up to China and they will become to they will become like us, what did he say? It's just plain wrong. For 20 years, the West was wrong. For 20 years, we allowed China to do a number of things, to grow their economy, and they did it at our advantage. These two individuals got up and said, it's time for the West to wake up and recognize the threat that China faces, that China imposes, and that the West faces from China. It's not just the U.S. It's not the West. That's not just the U.S., it's the West. It is all of us that believe in freedom, that believe in freedom from the beginning and that that is what we are based on. And we all define freedom slightly differently. Freedom in the United States is different than the freedom that you experience in the Netherlands or that you experience in other places in Europe or that you ex experience in uh, Japan or Australia or whatever. But the fundamental belief is that of all of these governments is that it is free individuals that will select the government that will create the boundaries under which we will live together. And the focus is on freedom. We are freedom li lovers, but the other thing that with the threats that we face today, we must also become fighters for freedom. People get uncomfortable with that term. But if you don't, if we don't collectively fight for freedom, who will? Who will fight for freedom if we won't? In many cases, our own governments would be more than willing to take freedoms from us. 
uh, the globalists will take freedoms from us. And I'm sure that the Chinese would be more than willing to take as much freedom as we are willing to give them. For the last 20 years, maybe the last 30 years, they've had a very interesting strategy. We call it the hide and buy, right? How many of you own stock in Dutch companies? Not very, very many. Whoa, okay. Most Americans own stock in U.S. businesses. For the last 20 years, before that as well, but especially in the last 20 years, what have American businesses done consistently? We have expanded our, we have expanded our business focus into China. Why? It is a huge market. It is 1.4 billion people. The Dutch used to see that as a guilders opportunity. Now it's a euro opportunity. It was much more fun when you had guilders. Uh, for Americans, American businesses look at it and they see dollar signs. But what does China do? During those 20 years, they steal our technology. They've never opened up their markets. You, European countries and American companies cannot do business the same way that Chinese companies can do business in America. They spy on our universities. They steal our research. If you follow the discussion of Hunter Biden, anybody follow Hunter Biden? <laughs> he, is, uh, he is one of the most talented individuals in America. And that through this process, he has had the opportunity to sign contracts worth billions of dollars. Some would say he's a br brilliant businessman. Others might describe it as elite captured, that the Chinese dollars that flowed to Hunter Biden were there to influence him and others that he might know in terms of how they treated China. Okay. The interesting thing is, you go one step further, 2019, and this is why I say we haven't declared war on China. They declared war on us. They did it publicly in their own, in their own newspaper. The CCP declared a people's war against America. And the interesting thing is they declared that in May of 2019. What happens officially eight months later? COVID. We did a, uh, we completed a study with one of the groups that I work with. We believe COVID, and we think that there's a lot more evidence that COVID was manufactured in a laboratory than it developed in a bunch of bats, okay? We also know <clears throat> that when it developed and the Chinese knew that, that they had it, regardless if it came from a bat or whether it came from a laboratory, did they lock down China when they knew what they had? They willingly exported a COVID virus to the rest of the world. They locked down Wuhan, they locked down millions of people in China, but if you wanted to fly to Italy, if you wanted to fly to Brussels, if you wanted to fly to Skip Hall, get on a plane and go. And if you talk about and you take a long list, uh, again, a look at the list of things. One of the things the Chinese said, using biological warfare is an acceptable means of war. I've got to wrap up. But China is a threat. They are an evil threat. They are as evil of a threat when you take a look at what they do today is what the West and freedom-loving countries faced in the 1940s. Think about it. COVID has killed over a million Americans, six to seven million people globally. 
They are an evil regime and they want to dominate and they want to force us into a position of submission to their form of government. And they will use every mechanism possible to make that happen. It is time for us to come together to recognize that what we are fighting for, we are fighting for our personal freedom, we are fighting for our countries, and we are fighting for our way of life. Because there are people who want to take it away. We have been asleep for too long, and it is time for us to recognize that and develop the strategies that will enable us to be successful and confront and defeat this evil threat. I have enjoyed talking with you. I enjoyed talking to a number of you before uh, the session. I will stay here afterwards and uh, be more than willing to answer any and all questions that you have. There are a lot of you here. When I used to do this with the students in college, uh, here and talking to them in the Netherlands, I would make sure that I was always the last one to leave. Uh, I hope you want to get home more than I do tonight. Thank you very much, uh, and touch seats. <laughs>